Okay, I'm gonna go through a few examples of the oblique lateral inner body fusion from two to five, as well as some SPS single position cases. This first case is a 69 year old male with L45 uh, DDD and foraminal stenosis. So here's his preoperative imaging uh, showing L45 uh, disc degeneration with uh, significant uh, posterior disc protrusion, which contributes to central canal stenosis. Uh, so the things to note on this preoperative MRI are the corridor. We can see the left iliac artery is here and the belly of the psoas is here. And so there's a nice corridor in which to dock. But one of the things that can inhibit you is, is that this gentleman has a very large psoas muscle. Now, typically in older patients, older um, female patients, you'll see that the psoas is significantly smaller. It's easier to retract, it's more pliable. Uh, but in either men or younger men especially, the psoas tends to be quite large in size. Now, what can help facilitate manipulating it is to have the anesthesiologist relax the patient. And when they do that, the psoas does become a lot more compliant and it's easier to reflect back and retract posteriorly. And because of the fact that you know a lot of the lumbar plexus nerves are kind of contained in the posterior aspect of the psoas, when you do reflect the muscle back, you almost never encounter those plexus nerves. So you're safe retracting the psoas, it pads all your lumbar plexus nerves and your femoral nerve, and it facilitates the exposure a lot. Now, if you are more comfortable with um, monitoring, and that's still an option is to have the patient initially relax, do your exposure, reflect the psoas back, lighten the relaxation, and then you can monitor your surgical field to ensure that there are no uh, plexus nerves in the region. And so typically for my workflow, uh, which is single position for a lot of the single level fusions, the patient is positioned on the table, prepped and draped. We do an O-arm spin. And the first thing I'm gonna do is cannulate the pedicles. So typically I, I prefer to use a navigated Midas burr. So I use a pilot hole, cannulate the pedicles, and then I like wires, so I'll place um, a wire into each of the pedicles, and in this case at L4-5. So we placed wires at L4, L5, and you come to the front of the patient after you've cannulated the pedicles and place holding wires. You do the disc preparation, your OLIF exposure. In this case, I used a PIVX implant, and this is actually a 27 uh, millimeter cage. So it's quite a large cage. This patient had a good large anatomy. Uh, place the PIVX cage, and then you come back to the posterior aspect and place your final pedicle screws and rods. Now, the reason you do the initial uh, pedicle screw wires or pedicle screw cannulation in the beginning is because once you start to do disc preparation and you dilate the disc, you put in trials and an implant, it's going to distract your disc and it's going to alter your anatomy. So before you do uh, any of that inner body work, you have to cannulate your pedicles first because that's when your navigation is still going to be accurate. And as soon as you have done your inner body work, that navigation is no longer reliable. And so these are the finals of that same patient. So you can see there's Voyager pedicle screw hardware um, placed from the posterior aspect, and these are cap rods connecting them. And with single position, it helps facilitate a lot of that uh, time, whereas a and in, a, in comparison to, in, to doing this traditionally, what you would have to do is first do the inner body work, have the patient position in a lateral decubitus position, complete your inner body, break down the drapes, have your crew come in, transfer the patient to another bed, reconfigure the table, place them in a supine position, and then start and do your posterior aspect. So the accumulation of time with breaking down the drapes, repositioning, reprepping and draping, in some awards, they can be very efficient, but a lot of times it adds another additional 20 to 30, sometimes even longer minutes to the case. So when doing it in a single position type method, you're able to facilitate that by placing all the hardware you would in a traditional 360 type workflow, but doing it all from a lateral position and you cut down your time significantly. Uh, the second case is a 54-year-old female with uh, DDD, L4 to S1, 
And preoperative imaging, you can see she has a significant disc degeneration from L4 to S1. Her lumbar lordosis and pelvic incidents were relatively well maintained, so I didn't have to do uh, a lot of manipulation with placing a hyperlordotic cage. This is her preoperative uh, MRI at L4-5. You can see uh, there's a nice corridor in between the iliac artery and the psoas. So this is an ideal case uh, for doing the exposure and placing your initial dilator at L5-S1. Uh, the right side vessels are very good. They're very lateral. You can see a very large fat plane underneath the tube. On the left side, it, it may be a little bit more difficult where you see that longitudinal kind of shape of the iliac vein, but there still is a fat plane um, in between the iliac vein and the disc. So I know I'm going to be able to mobilize that still. Uh, another thing to note on her is the foraminal stenosis, which you often see with significant uh, disc degeneration. And I'm going to show you an example of a post-operative MRI that shows a lot of that disc um, with the restoration of height improves both the foraminal and the central canal stenosis. So this is her intraoperative image uh, showing a pivx inner body at L4-5 and then a sovereign implant at L5-S1. And again, in terms of placing inner bodies from an oblique approach, you can see that the integrated screws into the sovereign implant are straight up and down, just like it would be with an ALIF, and there isn't, isn't any issue with coming in from an oblique approach compared to a traditional anterior ALIF approach. The sovereign implant in particular, the integrated screws almost guide these screws uh, where they should, should be going, even though you're placing them from an oblique trajectory. And this is the posterior pedicle screw fixation, uh, again, using Voyager and capped rods. Um, in comparison, we have some restoration of uh, lordosis preoperatively. She had approximately 24, 25 degrees in that segment. And postoperatively, um, she had approximately 43 degrees. The third case is a 65-year-old female um, with lumbar DDD and stenosis, and she was a multi-level case. So you can see she has multi-level uh, DDD, some loss of lumbar lordosis. Uh, these are her preoperative MRI uh, images. And so the upper corridors, you see in her, on her example, uh, so L2 to 5, she has a very large corridor here. So this is going to help facilitate uh, exposure. At L3-4, it, it is more narrow, but there is still a, a separation there. So I know if I'm going to be able to get down to the psoas and reflect that back, I'll have a large corridor. Something to note uh, at L2-3 and L3-4 especially, a lot of times at both those levels, sometimes the anterior lip of that psoas will, will flatten out and you do end up going through the anterior fibers of the psoas and I think that's okay. Your, your main goal is to keep most of the psoas muscle belly intact in order to hold the plexus nerves posteriorly. So if you do have anatomy where the L2-3 and L3-4 psoas muscles are flattening out anterior and you can't adequately reflect the entire muscle belly um, back, it's okay to go through some of those anterior fibers, uh, just as long as you can retract most of the psoas muscle posteriorly. These are her intra-op images showing uh, pivx placement um, at the uh, multiple levels here. Uh, it does help facilitate placement of the inner body, I think, with pivx because there is an oblique trajectory in terms of their disc preparation and their actual insertion handle. And if you look at the pivx, insertion handle, it has the ability to change that angle. So depending on what trajectory you're coming in at, if it's a very steep oblique angle, you're still able to put an orthogonal type implant by using that insertion handle. Now, when you are doing a multi-level case, uh, a lot of the times there's a question of where you place the incision. So this is a clinical picture. Uh, the top side of the picture is the posterior aspect of the patient. The left side is towards the head and right side is towards the foot. And what I'm showing here is uh, this incision here and this incision here are to access the L2 to 5 discs. So the disc for L2-3 is here. So that's the L2-3 disc. The L3-4 disc is right here. And then the L4-5 disc is right here. 
And so often if I'm accessing L23 and L34, I'll place one incision in between the two in order to access those two discs and then a separate incision to access the L45 disc because often L45 is more difficult in terms of exposure and accessing that disc. So I'll give L45 its own dedicated incision and I'll share an incision in between L23 and L34. The other thing to note is if you were to do a traditional direct lateral, you'd make the incision directly over the disc space at L23 and L34. When you're doing OLIF, the trajectory of the incision, the placement of that transverse incision does not need to come real far forward. I've just shifted this incision approximately three centimeters anterior. Sometimes you do have to come uh, more anterior than this depending on the anatomy, but if the patient is a little thin, thinner and the anatomy of the psoas um, is reasonable, you do not really need to come that much more anterior with those incisions. And then jumping down to L5S1, so the patient's crest is on the top side here. This is the incision for the L5S1. And you see it's significantly smaller than doing a traditional vertical A-lift type incision. And we're able to access the disc uh, at the same time as the upper level. So when, when I am doing a multi-level case, including L2 all the way down to S1, I'll typically have this type of configuration where there's two incisions to access the upper disc from L2 to five. And then there's one incision down below for the L5 S1 disc. Thank you.